So I'm at the Emmys in New York City, and I meet WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder. And, and uh, Deontay, your folks said, how come you haven't had the champ on? I said, that's real easy to fix. And boom, here we are. I appreciate you being uh, with us. How are things going? You doing good? Uh, thank you guys for having me. And uh, everything is great, man. Uh, I'm enjoying my life. Uh, I'm enjoying family while I have family time. And it's amazing. Well, it's an interesting time in the division. You know, you, you had your knockout, first-round knockout in May, and then we have the, the, the surprising Ruiz decision, and then now you got Tyson Fury. He's got a fight coming up on the 15th. And I feel like the heavyweights, Deontay, more than they have been in recent years, are a part of conversation more in the sports world. Did, do you have that same sense? Uh, most definitely, you know, um, that I'm a part of it as far as the heavyweight division and boxing in general. You know, I've seen where it's been in a dark place, especially for the heavyweight division, where it is now. And it's, it's, it's an, I'm telling you, it's an amazing feeling to, uh, to be a part of it right now. You know, uh, we was in a dark place, and now we're, we, we've came out of the dark tunnel, and, uh, and we're into the light. And it's, it feels real good to have the conversations, people talking about the heavyweight division, you know, often. Again, it's, and, um, and you got an amazing champion in America, too. You know, it's nothing like the American. And when they get behind, you know, something, you know, it makes the sport even more blossom as it is, as it's doing right now. It's def there's definitely a lot of attention. And look, you had you led my show with that first round knockout, which uh, which caught everybody's attention. I mean, you, you, you become that guy that everyone wants to see what's going to happen and don't blink. You might miss it. But then the Ruiz, <laughs> the, the, the Ruiz decision was just a shocker. How did you react to that when yeah. that happened? I mean, you know, I wasn't surprised at all. And I told uh, my manager, Shelly. I told, I told him not to be surprised if, if uh, Andy win, you know, because um, we was discussing him. And I was, I was thinking more so a 12-round fight. And I told him, don't be surprised if he wins. You know, um, I never thought it would be, what, it was six or seven rounds. And uh, it was amazing. You know, this is, this is what boxing all about. You just can't read a book by its cover. I always tell people I like to be the part instead of looking the part because looking like you can do something – don't necessarily mean you're going to be able to do it, you know, mm -hmm. but actually having the heart and, to, and being the part is a whole totally different thing. And, um, you know, a lot of people uh, look past him. I think they underestimated Andy as well because when they look at him, they see this, 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 this guy that look out of shape, you know, and um, he came in there, he had a, a game plan, and he executed the game plan. And now we have a new champion just like that. He's got quick hands, too. I was surprised. I, I have to admit, I mean, I was as guilty as anybody. I looked at him and I thought, no shot, because obviously Joshua looks the <laughs> part. But he's got quick hands, man. Yes, indeed. You know, um, he's a skillful fighter. Right. You know, and, um, and he was determined. It's nothing like a man that's determined, that's been knocked down. To I tell you, you know, people, it's, it's sometimes it's all right to lose because people are already going to, you know, expect you expect you to try to get back up, but they also want to see how do you get back up from, from being dropped down. You know, that's even in life in general sure. itself. And um, this is his time to, to be knocked down as far as Joshua is concerned and, and build himself up. But, you know, Reese, you know, he's always been skillful, and um, he had his ti first title before, and I, you know, against uh, Joseph Parker. He ended up, you know, coming short on that. But he was more than ready for this opportunity. And, you know, it, it makes it even – better when you got a, a guy in there that already looking past you because of the state that's going on in boxing and trying to get that that uh the most highly anticipated fight you know that was in the world which is would have been against I and uh you just can't you just can't look past guys and you know Joshua coming over here the first time in America he's been built up and boosted up and hyped so big you know and you had to come over here then fighting a, a a guy you're looking past and getting knocked out like that, man, that's, you know, to me that was it was it depend you know with everything that was built up in there that was it, I would have been I would have felt embarrassed, you know. He quit, the guy gave up in the ring. Yeah. He got dropped four times and gave up. And he's supposed to be this big guy, you know, just you know bigger than life. But I I blame his promoter for all that. I blame mm -hmm. his promoter for bigging him up like that. I always want to be on the videos. I always want to do the interviews. It's one thing about this sport, man. 
you you know, having people on the outside, you cannot talk for people, you know. Oh, yeah, uh, I talked to Josh yesterday. He said this. So, yeah, my man go do it. It's okay. You got to be modest and mild with it a little bit because you can't say so much because you're not going to be the one in, in the ring fighting at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. So not only was Joshua have to bag up stuff that he says, but now he had to bag up the stuff that the promoter so loved to have the attention and get in front of every camera that would get him the attention and, and talk all his mess. And then <clears throat> when you get in there with an opponent like Andy, when people at least expect him to see what's going to happen or they look at him and judge a book by his cover and you get knocked down four times and then you give up. That's, you know, that's humiliation and that's embarrassment at, at, at his first, at, at, at the top of the class, you know, so. But that, that messes, know, that messes with your money. That messes with your money a little bit, too, because then that, that, that fight, what does that do to that fight between you two? Well, you know, I think that fight will always be there. You know, um, a, a O is, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world when you have a loss. Right. You know, many of, champion, many of our champions in history, you know, have came back you know, from losses, that's yeah. how they became two-time, three-time, four-time, five-time champions, you know? So, you know, a lot of people think just because you lose mean it's over with, you know, because of the landscape that's been going on, you know, you have, you had a fighter that come up with the motto, you know, uh, of, you know, having a reputation of winning all the time, and he made a, a, a lot of money out of it. He executed on winning and keep winning, and now, these fighters, they see that and they think that you have to be undefeated to get all the way to the very top to make the, the most money, but that's not true. You know, most fighters, you, you have more fighters in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the business that have gotten more opportunities as, as um, fighting the, the title with losing records than you want with winning records. But, that's just how it goes. You know, it's all about what you do uh, upon defeat, right. how you get back up, but you now know, brush yourself to... out. It's, He'll have to wait, though, right? Because, I mean, it looks like, I mean, the, the fight that everybody is interested in besides that one will be you and Fury again. I mean, that, that, that has to happen yeah. at some point, doesn't it? Oh, most definitely. That definitely will happen. You know, everything is, is good with that situation. It's, um, so, you know, we're still keeping the light lit up in the heavyweight division. You know, just because he lost and the, the mega fight ain't happening right now it doesn't mean that it can't happen in the future, you know. Um, it does mess up the money a little bit, but, hey, man. <laughs> Not you yours. Know, it's not a lot, your, of, it's not a lot your of money. money to, it, it, not mine. <laughs> there you go. You're a smart man. <laughs> That's it right. messing minds up. You know what I mean? You know, we got a lot of things going on with my career, man. You know, uh, you know, we move strategically, and um, I got the best team in boxing, period. You know, uh, my two guys to combine together with Shelly and Al, you know, they got over 60 years of experience in boxing. And, you know, every fighter that, you, you, you know, champion you know, that have made the most of their career, you know, have been with these guys. So, of course, they know how to move my career and put me in the, in the, in the right path that I need to be in. And that's where I'm in right now. I'm in the driver's seat, and uh, we're just sitting back, and uh, we're just relaxing, and, and we're just staying humble, staying patient, and um, observing everything. We're going we're gonna to take advantage of everything. Like I tell people, I'm walking in my manifestation right now. And when you understand your path, when you understand your your your, your what, what what your when you understand this course that you're on, you're able to to reap all the benefits and the rewards that come with it. You know, I've been marinating for a long time. I've been sitting back observing. I've been through so much throughout my career, and now that I'm here, I know exactly just what to do with it. That's a beautiful place to be, man. A lot of people, a lot of people never quite figure it out. It sounds to me like you've got it all figured out. It sounds to me like at some point we'll see Fury. It sounds to me like at some point we'll see Joshua. And it sounds to me like you're going to just let things uh, sort of reveal themselves to you. Is that the best way to put it? We'll figure it out in time. Uh, most, uh, most definitely. You know, we got a lot of sudden sign fights that's coming up, and um, it's just getting more interesting. As it goes on, you know, belts has been changed hands. Yep. The only belt that hasn't been changed in hand since 2015 has been that good old sweet precious WBC <laughs> baby. And uh <laughs> Let's stay. And, you know, Deontay Wilder has that. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah, staying on um, your but, waist. Um, staying on your waist and around you around go. your waist. All right, listen. I really appreciate the time. Uh, I'm glad our paths crossed because it, it brought you here. And as you continue on this path, uh, hopefully your path and mine will cross again and we'll, and we'll chat again. I look forward to that chance, all right? My man, same here. Until then, God bless, brother. Peace. You, you as well. Thank you. Deontay Wilder, WBC heavyweight champion.